Hello, my name's Franz Sands and welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. Bit of a punch bag workout for you, but something different. This is a maze bag. It is not a normal bag. It's hard. It's shaped different. It's not like that bag over there. So this video will help you use a bag like this. These things are not to be messed around with. You really need to know how to use them. These things are so hard that when you're hitting them properly, you can feel the fillings in your teeth loosen with every punch. I mean, they are, it's like, it's probably not um, uh, 100 miles different than punching a wall, okay? So we need to use it different. If you want to know how to use a bag like that one over there, there's a link below called The Ultimate Bag Workout. That'll tell you everything you need to know. It gives you a great workout plus a bunch of footwork drills to help you build in to that um, uh, that type of bag work. Um, this you use differently. This is all about building power in the pocket. It's, and we'll go through four points with you in this video that will help you get the most out of using a bag like this. Um, let's get straight on to it. First off, range. This bag is all about helping you develop your close, short and mid-range boxing, right? Um, so think about how many ranges there are in boxing. I'll stand right back here. This is out of range. This is far enough away to be for me to be relatively safe from an opponent's attack. This is the edge of range. My extended jab, the opponent is about an inch beyond that. Okay, edge of range. Long range, my long range punches connect. Mid range is about the length of my upper arm away from the opponent. This means that I can land hooks and uppercuts at mid range. Everything up to that is in mid range. Then the final range is there. My nose is right on top of the opponent. So short range is everything from the tip of my nose to the length of my upper elbow away. So we're here, right? When you use a maze bag, most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to be here or here, right? If you are at long range, you're really wanting to find a way of getting to close range and you should always seek to do damage on the way in. This is not about hitting it with straight punches. So when you move in, seek to do damage as you are on your way in, right? That's the first point. Understand the range, stay on top of the bag. Secondly, punching. Punching as offense, punching as defense. Um, the, because you're this close to a bag, it is horribly inefficient and really quite dangerous to start winging punches around. It's what I see certainly in beginner boxers. They have this urge to, they think if they, if they start to punch back here, the further it travels, it's, you know, it's, it makes sense to the lay person. If you want to throw a stone, the further back you can get it, you know, you can really launch it. But a punch is different. A punch, the power is generated in a bit of a different way. There's still a chain reaction, still starts at the feet, but the length it comes from has not really got a great deal to do with it. If I do this at close range, all I'm doing is leaving big holes in my defense. So when I'm punching at close range, the arms, even when they're throwing, so when my, I'm in offense, when I'm in offense, when I'm in attack mode, my arms, are still providing uh, defensive opportunities for me. Shoulders up, chin down, nice and relaxed. So if I, you can see if I hit that with that, that hook, my shoulders up nice and high, covering my the left side of my jaw. The arm is in almost a shielded position. This arm is back here. Same there, same there. So when you're throwing these short punches, make sure that you have defense in mind as well as attack. 
Number three, and connected quite closely with that, is the explosive drive from the feet. Given that my arms are traveling a really short distance, sometimes I'm only throwing punches that are traveling two to three inches. It's crucial that all of the power is generated from the feet, giving you good rotation. For example, you explosive drive off the rear foot, round into the attack position, push off the front foot, same with the backhand uppercut, hip goes round and up. All of the power going into them shots generated from the legs. Really important that when you're throwing hooks, uppercuts, at close range, they are technically perfect. Meaning, lots of drive comes from the feet, lots of explosive power transference up through the body into the punches. That's number three. And number four, be dynamic. What do I mean by that? Well, there's three areas of being dynamic. First off, be dynamic in respect of target selection. Body, head, center line, flanks. If you hit, uh, if you attack down your right channel into the left flank of the opponent, it's very likely that will, that will leave an opening up the center line or around the other side. On, the, on their right flank, on your left flank. So when you attack here, bring shots up here. When you attack here, bring them round there. When you attack there, bring them up there. Each time you hit one point, attack a different point. You can double things up. But a good, a good rule of thumb is that when you hit one position, openings happen elsewhere. So think about varying it the shots there in, in respect of the target you hit. Secondly, uh, power variation. Don't throw the same power shots all of the time. Do what Lomachenko does, is, is an expert at this, where he'll throw some bang and then whack shots in. Um, so vary the power of the punches, lull the opponent into a, into a sense of security, only to explode at one or two big shots. The fine art, final piece of advice around being dynamic is feet. Be dynamic with the feet. Get, even though you're in the pocket, you're at close range, the feet can still be doing some pretty cool stuff. You know, pivots, angled side steps, stance switches. I'll put links down below. Now, in the interests of desperate presentation, I am gonna do a round on this horrendous piece of punching equipment. I only do, if I'm doing six rounds or, I only do about uh, maybe one, maximum two rounds on this. Um, it's horrendously, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, a truck driving at you and you punch in the truck, you know, it's, if you're a concert pianist, stay away from this thing, right? Stay away from the maze bag. There are other types called the aqua bag. I think these are relatively new to the market. I've not tried one. They look like they, they, they give a little less. It's an amazing piece of equipment, but don't, you, you know, don't do six rounds on this thing. Anyway, here's a demonstration of me trying to, um, trying to make this thing move a little bit with the best possible punches I can throw. And we'll wrap up after we've had this demonstration.
Okay, there you go. The maze bag. So if you've got one of these, if you're thinking of getting one, if you see one in the gym and you just think you hit it like you'd, you'd hit one of them bags over there, hopefully now this video's giving you something different to work on. Don't do six rounds on this thing. However well your hands are wrapped, you'll end, end up with hands like hell, boy. They'll be, you know, you'll feel like if, it, if you hit this for six rounds, six three-minute rounds, and you hit it hard and often, you're going to feel like someone you've put, got someone else's hands on. You know, they're going to, it's not going to be pleasant. So, yeah, so don't. Um, the basics always let me down, said no one ever, right? So download the beginner box of toolkit, my book. That will give you lots of insight on getting a good handle on the basics. Otherwise, subscribe, share, and I will see you in the next video. My name's Franz Sands, and this is myboxingcoach.com. Thank you very much.